Hello everyone. And again, I have my clue. <coughs> I was thinking about a craft. And then I realized we were very lucky in Dumfries and Galloway. We have our dark sky park. And have you ever gone outside and looked up in the sky and wondered at the stars and maybe seen patterns in them? I have. And there's nothing nicer than lying outside on a lovely summer lawn on an evening with mom and dad in a safe place and looking up at the sky, trying to see what you can see. Since history began, people have been looking at the sky and noticing patterns in the sky above them. You can see I've highlighted one or two of them in orange crayon on my star map that I've copied there. Star maps can be found in many places. My first port of call is to the books in my library. We've got many books that can teach you much. You don't have to wait for a teacher to teach you. You can do it yourself. So. People in the olden days on ships didn't have anything to tell them where to go. People like the Vikings. But they found their path. And how did they do that? Well, in the Northern Hemisphere, we are very lucky that there's one star that's exactly above the axis along which the Earth spins. And we call this the North Star. And we need patterns in the stars to find the North Star. Because once we know where that is, in the dark of night, we can find north, south, east, or west. <clears throat> and then you know which way to turn to get home. Even over land, in the desert, the people that go on these long camel trains, they use the stars to navigate. Because in the desert, there are no landmarks. You can get lost very easily. And if you can't find an oasis with water, then you're stuck. So, I went and looked. <coughs> it wasn't long before people started making maps. And then they gave the patterns names. All kinds of interesting names. Like the Big Bear. And the Little Bear. And at the tail end of the Little Bear, that's the North Star. Why is it not in the center of my map? Because as the earth spins and as it goes around the sun, everything changes. And from sunset to sunrise, the heavens spin, or uh, the earth spins, we know this now. So the patterns shift and they're not always in the same place. So you have to be able to recognize them to find them. Now, in the olden days, People like to imagine they can see animals. So this is a picture of the big bear, which is this one here. My favorite constellation is the constellation of Orion. When you're faced with the sky like this, how do you know which way is up? You don't really, because it spins. Every which way is up, depending on the time that you look at it. But how people got from that image to this one, which shows Orion. You have his two shoulders, you have, you have his belt, you have his sword, and then you have his knees. Orion is my favorite constellation, because I can find it easily. But, but... <clears throat> the bear is a favorite constellation, and many people say it looks like a saucepan. Many people say, oh no, it looks like a plow. Can you see it? It depends on which way up you're looking at it, which way the earth turns. There's so many other animals as well. And the science of seeing animals in the sky and for telling fortunes is called astrology. But the study of stars themselves is called 
astronomy. So that's what we've got. So essentially, this picture here starts looking like that. Nobody draws handy lines in the sky for you to see them. You have to watch for the patterns of the stars. So many people have made, made many interesting help things for children and for grown-ups to learn about the stars. So I found this site. I'm not supposed to advertise it, but you go on the internet, you can find so much. And the image of the big bear is our saucepan or our plow, the blade of the plow and the handle of the plow, just here. But they saw other bright stars and some of them could have been planets. And so they made an image of a bear. So I thought what we could do is make a little craft so that we can practice seeing the shapes and the patterns of the stars when we go outside. And to that end, oops, noise, I made myself a stargazer. Mm -hmm. And this is how you do it. What do we need? We need a tin with a lid and a bottom. If you don't have one, don't worry. You can always stick paper over the required bits if you want to use a cardboard tube like this one. But I used one like this. You need a hammer and a nail because you have to make a hole in the bottom. Ask Dad to help with that. You're going to need some glue or double-sided tape. You're going to need your pair of scissors. You're going to need a soft surface. I just used a towel and you're going to need a pin. Of course, you're going to poke holes, aren't you? So, then you need a bit of nice colorful card because you want to decorate the outside of your stargazer. You're going to need some black card because you're going to have to cut out some circles. I'll explain about that. And if you're desperate, I have made a little file with these star signs on them for us to practice with. You can find your own ones. They're out there online. There are many astronomy sites where you can do free print-offs of these things. But I will attach this file and you can use it. So what do we do first? First, we poke a hole in the bottom. Second, we cover our tube. Third, we use the cap and our dark card. We draw our circle and we cut it out. If you're going to print off my little sheet, you cut them out as well. Then what you do is you stick your star shape inside your black circle. Now, can you see there's a bit of a rim? That is important. Once you've done that, you use your lid and you pop your little card in there, just like that. I've made a mark to show you which side is up, but I've already explained. It's not necessarily up. It can go in any direction. Next thing we do, we pop it on our tube, and now if we look through it, we will see the shape of the stars. I can show you maybe what that will look like. Can you see? But of course, this image is now back to front because you're supposed to look at it in this direction. And there you can see the different stars in their correct formation. Now, if you go outside tonight and you look up in the night sky, you can look to see you can recognize the shapes. Why is that important? When you look at this shape, see that side of the saucepan, it points directly 
to the North Star. And once you can see that, you will find the shape of the little, little, the big bear points to the little bear and the tail end of the little bear is your North Star. I've also got my Orion. Can you see? I've poked holes in all the stars so that when the light comes through, you can see what the stars look like. You'll not be able to see this. You will just see the light coming through the stars. There's another constellation that you can see quite clearly, Cassiopeia. Oh, she is the queen of heaven and she makes a huge big W in the sky. And again, the people that do the coloring in sheets I've got an idea of how the stars fit in her shape. You can find these from this website. You can color them in. And when I didn't explain about the poking holes. If you put your card on your soft surface and you just, with your pin, you poke the holes all the way through and wriggle them. And the more you wriggle, the bigger your holes will be. So, that's it. I hope you have fun making constellations, fitting them into your stargazer, and having a look. And then ask mom and dad to come outside with you and look up in the heavens and see if you can find those shapes. Orion is tricky because he sometimes go right down the horizon. Sometimes you can just only see half of him sticking out. It's one of the few constellations you can see in both hemispheres. But in the northern hemisphere, you have Cassiopeia, the little bear, the big bear, Ursa Major, and Ursa Minor. So do enjoy your stargazing, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye now.